Oh, it started. Okay, so this is part two. So, so that's really fascinating. I, I, you know, I was just sitting here going, gosh, I hope we're getting this recording because this is really fascinating stuff that, that explains how the, the realm that we're in functions. And we were talking about this hyena daemon that has three legs and the scientist who actually hates his own soul aspect this hyena and then Kara was commenting on the golden monkey and how the golden monkey is nefarious um and is a reflection of mrs coulter who is i mean that's the thing about the daemons which i found really fascinating was the daemons are a really good reflection of the person so that some of them were reptoids like some of them were snakes some of them were weird reptiles and i'm going yeah that's that's what's going on here too is there are beings who have a soul aspect that is reptilian you know mm -hmm. and or what i've also gotten into there are beings here who don't even have souls which are actually cyborgs walking mm -hmm. around without souls and they they work in bureaucratic positions to uphold the matrix and a lot of them i actually i've really been observing like pediatricians and people who can do what they do and give 40 or 50 or 80 different jabs to an infant and i'm going i just really feel like they either hate their daemon have disconnected for the, from their daemon or have not ever had a daemon because the daemon serves as kind of a consciousness point to you. So mm -hmm. it, it instructs you, you know, but if your daemon is nefarious like this monkey, the golden monkey, he figures out how to like grab other children's daemons. So like he's grabbing the mouse daemon of some child so she can grab the child. like it works toward her purpose. And that is a whole other realm of understanding for me, like what makes a murderer murder? So I've talked about Jeffrey Dahmer's chart and Jeffrey Dahmer before, and he was one of those really strange souls that would abduct and then, you know, gross, you can look it up. And I'm going, did he have a soul? Was he demonic? Did his soul unconsciously inform him of right and wrong and moral decisions? This part of the book, when he gets into this hyena and he actually beats his own hyena, he beats it and the kids in the book are going, oh, they're shuddering going, oh my gosh, he's beating his own soul. He's maiming it. He's kicking it. They were like shuddering and moving away. So this gets into like the psychopathic realms for me where I've always tried to understand what makes a psychopath a psychopath? What makes these like unfeeling lizard people who have lizard soul aspects able to do what they do? And reading these books, you start to understand that the soul aspect it sometimes can be a really disturbing soul here and that is just coded wrong, which is what Voyager's volume two said that there were a lot of beings who got coded wrong. They were part of hybrid experiences and, and their soul carries, like, like Kira said, the 1,728 different aspects that you have are actually all happening now. So if you got coded wrong in some other timeline, that, that follows through to here and now and your relationship to your soul aspect. So I don't even know how to explain this other than in the psyche, it hit me and went, wow, that could be going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I had I had that same that same thought too when I was reading that. Um and you know, when you we we kind of want to believe that our soul st 
stays like this perfect essence through all the lifetimes through you know this experience but yet our body and our our psychological we have so many whether it's mind games whether it's environmental toxins whether it's jabs you know whatever it is that we are taking in that's not just taken in on a physical level it can't be you know because it is it does emanate so are we carrying we're carrying that damage i don't want to call it damage but that with us so yeah i found that interesting too i i'm so glad that we're talking because as a libra ascendant i need to like sometimes i really need to talk with someone to get the clarity of what i also understood better communicated so what your soul experiences on a consciousness level whatever happens to you physically affects your soul because interestingly when lyra was drugged by her own mother and held in the cave mm -hmm. her mother was trying to keep her asleep so she would give lyra the drug and her pan, her aspect pan also was drugged yes so that's what we're trying to say here is even though you know there was this real divide among people who i thought were very conscious around um the choice to be part of the experiment that's happening right now and they're going oh like what does it matter you know it's just a human experience and and I'm going, you are not getting this, folks. You are not getting this because when you do something to your physical body here and take in some kind of gene serum here, your soul aspect is getting that and all the other dimensions that you are. And in fact, I do believe that that is where um, I had written that I saw people were being cut at the 10th dimension. So I don't know how this happens, but the, the nano particles that are in there are like little razor blades. And if they're doing little razor blades in your physicality, I kept seeing in my shamanic abilities that people were being cut at the 10th dimension. So don't think that some little experiment that you take here as a toxin is not going to affect all of your future incarnations and in fact all of your past incarnations and the being you are here and now. It's astounding. It, it, and we have the experience of reading these books to see how when you get severed from your daemon, when Will, who doesn't even know he has a daemon, gets severed from his daemon, he becomes a reduced being. Like they're so sick and in so much pain and their hearts hurt so much because they had to leave their demons or their daemons on the shore to get in the boat to go to the land of the dead. There was like strict rules about that, right? You cannot bring your yeah. puppy, puppy daemon, even though it's crying and whining, you cannot bring it with you to the land of the dead. They hurt, they really hurt. And so when I work with shamans and they say that the soul is so fractured that they can that this being can only do a space dust return that's how your soul gets fractured lifetime after lifetime is those kinds of experiments that happen that sever and fracture your soul and it's like you left part of your soul on the dock and now you're in pain and you can't really embody so when i used to do soul retrievals it was about pulling back all of those different parts of soul to a more cohesive self but my shaman friends actually said that some beings are so fractured now they can't even get all of those pieces which is why 
we were, you know, here we're looking at several different realms of zombie in, in my mm -hmm. experience. And that's why you say, well, why can't they see they're spraying the sky? Well, they can't see anything, folks. I mean, they're just walking dead. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And uh, my kids, <laughs> I, I know they got this from somewhere. They call um, a lot of the people you encounter who are empty sort of shells, they call them non-player characters because it's a game, <laughs> you know, that we're in this realm and some of the people we meet are, they're just, they're not a player in the game. They're just a character. They repeat the same phrases over and over again, what they're programmed to say. So I find, I found that so fascinating the first time I heard them say that. I'm like, what are you talking about? And then they explained it to me and I was like, that's really smart. <laughs> Yeah, so, they're just they're just kind of fill in sideline persons that yeah. hold the matrix. Mm -hmm. Yep. So if we can also understand that that there's a lot of fillers here. Um, for me, that helps me just focus on my own process, because if I think that I'm doing light work you know or new age um new earth awakening for the populations i'm also in another trap i'm in the same kind of trap as the martyr who feels like she's got to do her her prayers to god um there's a whole lot of whatever curious kids call it non-player entities <laughs> who are here taking up space who are not ensouled and then there are some really like start to feel it folks like i was in line the other day at um an irving oil gas station which is like a little mini mart type of place and there was a fellow in front of me and i felt like he was dangerous i felt like he was i could feel and i could also weirdly i could i could smell danger I, I smelled threat and I looked at him and I went, I don't know what you are, but you feel like a murderer to me. Like you feel really dangerous. And the instinct that we have as humans is something that's really informative about these non visual beings who are here. Um, some of them are purely cyborg. Some of them beat their hyena at night some of them like kick and beat their their own soul aspect at night and you take a step away from them you are not responsible for waking them up you are not responsible for praying for their soul they are just coded wrong folks and you just you just step away from the monsters yeah so is there anything that we should let people know in terms of these books and where we are right now you know i feel like we should start to close our session i'm going we've just covered a lot of really esoteric information but in terms of practical information is there anything that we've learned from these books that people need to know and take action on right now oh wow that is that's an interest that's a loaded question <laughs> that's a big question um, the biggest thing I feel is, is that knowing inside me of that they, and they talk, well, they don't talk about it. They show that level of love in the books, that love between a man and a woman. And that also, I feel like that occurred because they were in this realm where they were also deeply rooted in living simply and in a very harmonious way with nature. So I guess where I would say practically, um, that whole way of, of living in harmony with the earth and simply is the way through. There's so many complexities that are happening, but yet when you garden, you feel restored. You're creating your own food. 
you're naturally by default eliminating a lot of the plastics that you would come into contact with a lot of the chemicals that you would come into contact with not all of them but just by default you're eliminating a lot of them so by living simply and experiencing that love between a man and a woman you're essentially healing at the same time so i think that's part of it that's what i feel yeah there was so when people read this try and read the part where they compare they compare lyra to eve that was a super interesting part that i think we'll close with because my disc says it's almost full again and i don't want to have our <laughs> recording stop but the ad, i took i had this whole other take on the adam and eve story that they were rebels against this authority who had set himself up as god but that their true beingness was in the garden and they rebelled against god by eating from the tree of knowledge uh, and i was just going did they then realize they were in a demonic realm and the authority had set himself up here but i feel like there's something about that one world or realm where the elephant people with the trunks were really close to nature they were like living in huts and lyra had to bathe in the river and they were sleeping under trees and they were just they were in nature. It was like they had returned to the garden and knew they're pure and innocent. Like they were looking at the stars at night and they were covering themselves up with a blanket and they suddenly knew they were naked. I mean, there was that whole part in that one <laughs> section that was like the Adam and Eve story. There's something really deep in that. So in practical terms, folks, read the books for the esoteric truth of what is going on here but in practical terms remember the love between man and woman and that passionate kiss is the way that the dust particles stopped leaving and the only way that the trees would continue to bloom was that love connection so why don't we end with that then that sounds good thank you so much for talking with me yeah. I really hope we got this recording. It was great. Thank you so much, Kira. I'll Thank end. Thank you. Okay.